New Horizons has been out for over three years. In that time, we've seen a lot of improvements in the game, but Nintendo decided that New Horizons wasn't worth their time anymore. Jerks. No more updates, no more patch notes, we have a completed game. Now that it's the final version of the game, what does Animal Crossing look like three years later? We got a bunch of content updates. A few were just small patches to fix some bugs, added in some new holidays, and others added a bunch of new furniture items, quality of life updates, and brand new mechanics like farming and cooking. Speaking of cooking, <laughs> I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. I wouldn't know what to eat for dinner if it wasn't for HelloFresh. With my crazy schedule, I never give myself enough time to meal prep anything, or even go to the grocery store for that matter. With over 40 recipes to choose from each week, I never get bored with dinner. There's always something new to try, and with Drew's picky eating habits, there's always something on the list he enjoys. One of my favorite things about HelloFresh, they add seasonal flavors to their menu. You'll be able to find your fall favorite ingredients included in your delicious recipes. And the ingredients travel from farm to your door to ensure peak freshness, ripeness, and the best flavor. And HelloFresh is cheaper than takeout. No more expensive greasy bags of food, just pure fresh delicious meals waiting for you to cook up. Getting expensive takeout delivered every day adds up quickly. Sign up for HelloFresh now. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use my code POGCORAOCT16 to get 16 free meals plus free shipping. Offers for new subscriptions only, varies by plan across nine boxes. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Now that we're full from a good meal, let's get back to the video. Most of these New Horizons updates were just adding content that already existed in the game series, especially in the first year. Things like swimming, leaf, red, and art gallery. These were basic mechanics that we expected to be in the base game. Basic, base, you know, duh. Nintendo wanted to slowly introduce us to these features. From a veteran player point of view, this was rough. There were so many activities we were used to doing that we just couldn't do anymore. I don't know how we could forget to swim in the seven years from New Leaf to New Horizons, but there we were. Not to mention the pandemic made it so we all played this game for like 12 hours a day for months, which meant we finished the content they gave us relatively quickly. But for new players, this might have been a godsend. They could be slowly introduced to a few mechanics at a time getting used to the world they were plopped into before shoving their faces full of art, swimming, and catting. They were able to master mechanics just in time for more content to release and a new experience to learn. And with 40 million copies sold, New Horizons had a lot of new players. I know many pro Animal Crossing players weren't a fan of the style of updates, but it worked for Nintendo's intended audience. They usually know what they're doing. Usually. I mean, I would love some kind of Animal Crossing spin-off that we still haven't seen yet, but I don't know. They know what they're doing. One of the updates that we did get was a 2.0 update. This was the only true new content for New Horizons. You know, the one that gave us all the new stuff that we hadn't seen in the series before. It gave us a ton of stuff to do. A bunch of these were mechanics that were data mined from the first year of New Horizons life. Things like farming, cooking, and the existence of Brewster had data miners on the edge of their seats for a long time. I've said this multiple times before, but I think the pandemic really screwed up their plans. Why have evidence of a simple mechanic like farming in the game files for a whole year? This is Nintendo, it doesn't take them that long to figure out how to get their characters to farm. It seems like they had every intention of adding some of these 2.0 features throughout the first year, but unfortunately things in the real world didn't work out as planned and a bunch of new content was saved for the legendary 2.0 patch. We also got a very fancy DLC that gave us an entire new story to finish. I mean, it was all about decorating, but yeah, a new story nonetheless. With all the updates, we had a completed game, but the player base has entirely sunk. A lot of my friends don't play anymore, so I have no one to share anything with. Well, except for you guys, of course. Not that there was ever a lot to do with multiplayer in New Horizons anyway, but it was still nice to have millions of people all over social media that you could share your experiences and creations with. However, there are some perks to still playing the game this late into the game's life. Any design that you can think of has probably been made by someone else. It does make decorating a heck of a lot easier when you can just search for a design instead of trying to make one yourself. Especially when you're bad at pixel art. <laughs> That's me. And treasure islands still exist with every item that you'll ever need. Those still running- Excuse me, I'm trying to do my- To those still running them, thank you so much. You are appreciated. But there are still some downsides to playing this late in the game's life. Nookazon, the site that was constantly full of people trading everything you could possibly trade, is completely dead. Well, 
Okay, not completely. It's full of bots, <laughs> but a few legit people also trading stuff. It's not nearly as lively as it used to be. Turnip Exchange, which was the place to go if you wanted to share your amazing turnip prices or sell your own turnips, is basically non-existent at this point. Apparently nobody cares about turnips anymore. And the game isn't getting any more updates. If you're someone that needs that next new thing to come to the game, you're out of luck there. So if you wanted to come back to New Horizons three years later, you still can. There are resources available to you. However, there are some consequences to not showing up on your island for a while, and you'll have to deal with that if you turn the game on again. You get cockroaches in your house. Not the worst thing ever, a bit annoying to deal with and squish. Just don't let them get into your tea kettle. You'll be able to unlock the bedhead hairstyle though, so that's cool, I guess. And your villagers are sad, like big sad. They think you forgot all about them and they take it personally, but they'll forgive you pretty quickly. So in the end, everything is okay. You just, you know, they just kind of punch you in the face a little bit. When coming back, you'll probably ask yourself if you should restart. A fresh island will give you a lot of stuff to do. I have a whole video that goes deeper into resetting or flattening that you should check out, but just make sure you won't regret getting rid of your island. I deleted my original GameCube save file and I have regretted it ever since. You put a lot of hours into your island. Make sure resetting is what you want to do. Or maybe now's the time to start time traveling. Maybe you've played the game completely normally before. We've experienced everything this game has to offer three times now. Don't feel bad about time traveling. I rarely time traveled on my main island, but lately I've been skipping around during my rags to riches playthrough and I'm having a great time. It's a whole new experience. So now that New Horizons is a finished game and you haven't picked it up yet, is it worth the buy? Easy yes. With the updates that included mechanics like swimming, art, etc., most of the criticisms that players had in the game at the beginning are gone. Is it perfect? No. There are some mechanics and quality of life things that could be fixed. However, in my opinion, it comes pretty close to perfect. And my opinion is the only opinion that matters, which is why you're watching this video. So if you have a different opinion, it totally matters. You thought I was going somewhere else with that. We have a ton of cute furniture to craft, tens of thousands of regular furniture items to decorate with. If you bought the DLC, there's new housing customizations available, a huge museum to fill up, countless villagers to have on your island, a bunch of special characters, goals. It's a fantastic game. You should get into it if you haven't. And if you're a returning player, this is your sign to hop back onto your island, even if it's just for a week. You, know, you don't have to dedicate months to playing. Or maybe you've decided you just wanna finish New Horizons. This game never ends, but maybe it'll be fun to find a way for it to end. Finish that last goal, decorate that last empty area, feel the love you once had for the game. New Horizons three years later is a good game, but there are things missing, no mini games. We have the ability to play with our friends online, but can't really do anything with them. We can turn on a timer and catch some fish and bugs, drink coffee with them, or, you know, do what the community has done. Make our own games of hide and seek, create survivor animal crossing, or make a crazy maze that takes three hours to solve. Those first two things were built into the game. The last, everyone else created for us to have fun with this kind of lame online game. Only six types of fruit exist on our islands. New Leaf had a lot more. Maybe the developers thought we didn't need a bunch of different type of fruit that all had the same mechanic, but it helps when decorating to have options. New Horizons is all about customizing our islands to our taste. Well, I like the taste of lemons. Gimme. Still no multi-crafting. We're sitting here crafting bait one at a time. Come on, Nintendo. We can do better next game, right? No rugs outside. Except for Sahara. Jerk. We have a bunch of amazing artists that have created custom designs for the rest of the community to use, but this takes up a few spots of our super limited design slots, even though Nintendo did bless us with an expanded number of slots. No villager fetch quests. The GameCube version of Animal Crossing had a dialogue option to ask if the villager had a job for you. Usually this involved going to another villager in town and getting whatever item they left there. We have some requests now, but they are few and far between, and you have to wait for an animal to approach you. I liked running around, asking everyone what they needed, if anything. It gave me something to constantly do, gave me a reason to talk to my villagers, and you got rewarded for it. This was a great way to get items early in the game without having to spend your precious bells. And we really need a reason to talk to our villagers, especially since their dialogue still sucks. Animal Crossing games never really had a story to follow or a main questline to complete. Maybe this isn't the game for that, but it would be nice to always have something to do on the side of your normal daily activities. Something to work towards with rewards and progression. We'll probably never get a mechanic like this, even though it's one of the most requested features for the game, but who knows what the future holds. In the end, New Horizons is a good game. It has the potential to entertain you for hundreds or 
thousands of hours. If you haven't picked it up yet, even with the Switch 2 looming around the corner, New Horizons is worth it. This game is still fun to play three years later. What do you think of New Horizons now that we're three years into its life? Let everyone know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!